Well, it's Thursday, December 8th, and I just got the skid loader home. Brought the truck in the small garage, or the house, the garage, because it's a little warmer, and I'm gonna vacuum it out and put WeatherTech floor mats in there, so that's pretty excited about that. Um, but we got this thing home, and um, I don't know. I'm glad it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So, for those that you didn't know, I'll just show you here. It was the right joystick was um, given a code that it wasn't in neutral. So this joystick wasn't in neutral. Um, I had messed with the fuses, the relays, um, a sensor on the thing there that was pinched. And I looked at a few other things and tried, uh, uh, I tried all sorts of stuff. At one point it seemed like it was gonna work, then it didn't. I had peeled this rubber skirt that protects the electronics. I had peeled that up and looked in there to make sure it wasn't like a wire or like the, where they push wasn't bent. And then I put it back down. And then I brought it in to our local dealer in Faribault, which is uh, Matichex Case IH. And they're, they also do Bobcat, obviously then. That's why I brought it there. And um, they looked at it and um, they realized that this rubber skirt was on backwards so I don't I didn't know it could go on backwards I did put it back down but uh, for those of you that are having issues or possibly having issues with either joystick saying it's not neutral I would look to see if this is on the right way so I asked him I said how do you know and then he peeled it up he said it was working perfect for him for like an hour so he peels it up there in the front right about here there's a part number that goes across so he said the part number goes in front and I don't remember what he said is on the back side, but part number goes towards the front of the machine and that's the way it's supposed to pull. So he said when it was on backwards, it was pulling the joystick just a little bit forward. So you'd have to hold the joystick back just a little bit. He found on the computer when he was watching the the axes when he was had the computer plugged in. But if he just pulled back a little bit, boom, it would unlock. So he spun it around, put it back on, and now it's in the place it is. It, I got in and out. I went and helped uh, one of my coworkers with something. I probably got in and out 30 times. It only did it once. So I pulled this down tight and it stopped again. Because when he peeled it up at the dealership, I don't know, he just flipped it back down. I got in to load it and uh, I noticed the arms drifted down without me touching the thing and it went unlock, it was beeping. <clears throat> well, then this thing, the skirt was messed up on the back side. So I just pulled down tight and. Um, Knock on wood, I've gotten in and out of it here um, probably 15 more times at home. I've been putting stuff away. We're supposed to get eight inches of snow in a couple days and um, it hasn't done it. So, boom, unlocks, no alarm. So, I'll, uh, I had stashed all the buckets in the, uh, in this shed so I could put my pickup in the trailer and the Bobcat stacked in there together. That was the only way to fit it. I couldn't fit all the buckets in there. So I'll just show you the snow bucket here and then uh, I don't want to make this too long. So this bucket is a custom built uh, 10 foot snow bucket. Um, this is where I normally park my car for work and my truck. So this is kind of nice to not have snow on the stuff. So it's custom built. Um, here, I gotta do this so I can buckle it on. because. The face plate on the snow buckets, they sit like this. So it's a little tricky. The bobtatch got something up with it too, I'll have to look at. It almost has like a, it feels like the, doesn't want to open up all the way, like there's an oil bypass or something. But uh, it's a custom built 10 foot snow bucket by Novax Repair in Vestley, Minnesota. Um, I found this on Craigslist. Yeah, it's, I set it off the edge of the driveway, so I'm having a couple, little bit of issue getting it on here. It's sitting crooked, but, um, these people, they had bought it for their business and uh, they plowed a parking lot and then they wanted to get a snow blade or something. So they got rid of their, um, or they were selling it on Craigslist for like, I don't know, it was under half of what it was worth and it's seven years old, but you'd never know. Um, this thing's hard to get connected, especially when I had it off the edge there, so. I'll try setting it back down on the driveway here where it's flat. Um, but with the bigger screen, it's sweet. So if you're thinking about
about getting a snow bucket. I thought about snow blowers, but they want like seven grand for them snow blowers. There it went. They want like seven grand when I priced one out. Like 6,200 was like the fall special or whatever, spring special. I'm like, yeah, that's gonna be a no thanks for me because uh, you know every now and then we get enough, but usually it's like wet, heavy snow, and I'm. This isn't a high flow machine, but I know they make them where you don't have to have the high flow or whatever, but whatever. The snow bucket, I love it because, um, I mean, look at how much wider it is than the machine. You know, for the most part, it's pretty darn good. Um, I like it because our driveway has slopes on both edges. So with just a normal bucket, you could only get to the edge of the driveway and then we were leaving ridges and the wind blows out here so then it just fills the driveway where this sticks out that extra foot and a half or whatever over the edge of the driveway and then um, you don't have the ridges because it's off the edge of the driveway so the snow falls off so it works out a lot better that way I can move a lot of snow fast with that back screen and then I can get all the neighbors done and everything fast too so some people might say it's a little the machine's a little small and you know if I was doing it commercially, I probably would want a bigger machine, but it actually does pretty darn good um, for the size of machine it is. I think it's like, wow, it's been a long time since I looked it up. I think they're like 63 or 67 horsepower machines. Um, it's not two speed. I wish I would have had that, but that's more expensive too. But um, the Bobcat, I mean, for the most part, it's back in action. And... Um, You know what, like, you know, I was scared to take it to the dealer because, you know, it's a lot of money generally. But um, I'm actually pretty impressed because they said that if it keeps acting up that it's this, um, the base module or whatever of the joystick underneath here. And I'm not pulling this up because it's working and I don't want to mess it up. But uh, you can't see much anyways. There's just a little square or something they described it as. And uh, he said that might be going out. So... He told me that with labor, the part was like $680. And then with labor and everything, it's like a two or three hour job, they claim. So it was gonna be like $1,100. So they looked at it for, um, they looked at it for an hour and a half and they get $110 an hour. So 165 bucks, which and I don't know how long it took the computer to diagnose. Um, but uh, after it diagnosed or whatever, they just said, hey, this is all it needed. And I know there's probably dealerships out there that probably would have um, that probably would have just called and said, hey, you need this new joystick controller. It's $1,100 for us to do it. And, you know, I wouldn't have known any better because all this stuff has uh, electronics and whatnot on it. And um, I wouldn't have known any better. So we probably would have said, oh, that sucks, you know, and bit the bullet and put that $1,100 into it. You know, we would have been good to go, but $165, and they said, hey, you don't need that part. You know, we repaired it for what, you know. You know what, and I thought, I don't know, that's, it's good to see that type of honesty nowadays. So, I was impressed. I'm glad the skid loader is not uh, acting up anymore, and if it does, you know, I pulled the skirt down a couple more times on the joystick here, so it seems to work. So, if you're having issues with the joystick, I would start there, check your relays, check your other stuff you can check on your own, but, uh, that's just the price of doing business with newer equipment. You you end up going to the to the dealerships and whatnot. So let's see. I'm actually going to well, I'll drive this in, but we're supposed to get like an eight inch storm um, on uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning. It's over in Oregon right now or something, Washington. So they don't know exactly how much snow it's going to bring, but uh, it is coming. So it could bring more. So we're just kind of getting ready and uh, I wanted to make sure we had the skid loader home for that storm because us and all of our neighbors you know we kind of rely on this so I'm um, just gonna kind of try to not smoke the, the lawn mowers here because this bucket is pretty wide it's hard to see with the with the lift arms and whatnot so yeah thanks for watching everybody just a quick update on uh, the joystick uh, getting repaired so